Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I once again want to thank all of the witnesses for appearing. And it seems to me, based on all the testimony I have heard, um, is that the Exim Bank has really worked very diligently and effectively at, um, uh, at, uh, at adhering to the 2012 um, um, mandates. Um, I do have a question, though, for you, uh, Mr. Uh, McCarthy. I would hope that you would return to Wisconsin at some point to engage in, um, in, in your, your birthplace's uh, uh, stuff, but that is not why we are here today. But I would hope that you would do that. Um, I have been very impressed. I was impressed with your testimony with regard to the extent uh, that the IG has looked into uh, the operations of the Exim Bank, uh, even to the point that they have, um, that there has now been an indictment of an Exim employee. Sure wish that you guys had gotten to HSBC of their money laundering, drug dealers, the London Well, and stopped the 2008 crisis, but at least we got this one Exim employee. Um, I, I guess we have heard a lot of testimony um, that it, the Exim Bank has shown favoritism for projects based on political connections and electoral politics. So I was wondering if you discovered any of that in your investigations. So generally, crony capitalism. Generally, our investigations have been of outside parties uh, perpetrating fraud and money laundering schemes against the bank. We haven't reviewed specific allegations that we have received um, in specific cases of there was some type of undue political influence or things of that nature. You have not found that? We have not found that. Now, we, we do emphasize is that the bank needs to put, make sure that it has in place the appropriate internal controls. Uh, to make sure that things like that can't happen. If you have the proper policies in place, if you have um, separations of duties among employees, if you have procedures in place, it lessens the risk for that type of undue influence and also, also fraud cases. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Mr. Sheets from Treasury, again, I want to thank you for your due diligence. Um, you are currently negotiating with other countries to limit uh, or end export credit. Um, it, it, were we not to reauthorize the bank on the 30th of June, as uh, some uh, members of our, of our body would like, um, do you think that countries like Korea or China will voluntarily end their credit support programs? The other, uh, what is it, 60, uh, 59 countries are, you know, if we were just to disappear from this space? I, I think that would be very unlikely. And indeed, if we were to uh, unilaterally curtail, I think that there is uh, a risk, uh, uh, as I have indicated, that in negotiations going forward, we will have less leverage because we won't have, uh, we won't have uh, uh, anything to give in those negotiations. So I think it is uh, uh, important both from a level playing field standpoint uh, that we remain engaged on this. But also, uh, if our ultimate goal is to further discipline export credits, a unilateral curtailment uh, uh, would very likely move in the Would it be catastrophic? Those are my global, words. From a global standpoint. Would it be catastrophic to our economy? I think it would be uh, very, it would be very negative uh, and, uh, and adverse. Uh, how we define catastrophic. All right. Well, I, that's my definition. I'm from I'm parts. from Milwaukee, yeah. and so we're the manufacturers of the world. Uh, Boeing. All these people have people have issues with. They, Boeing doesn't make any screws and bolts and nuts and they come from Milwaukee. Small businesses. We've heard that 99 percent of the small businesses don't use Exim Bank. And, but isn't it true that 89 percent of the loans you guys make are to small businesses, Mr. Hochberg? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, what do you mean, Mr. Hochberg, when you say that the operations of the bank are demand-driven, uh, and, and, and how do you supplement private finance? Can you walk us through that? Certainly. Um, Demand-driven is that companies come to us. Uh, for example, you and I visited Maxson Industries in oh, Wisconsin. Yeah. There is a company that uh, makes construction equipment. They come to us when they are trying to sell overseas and can't get financing locally, or their competitors overseas have government-backed loans, so they want to make sure they are on a level playing field. So when I say demand-driven, they come to us, they seek us out only when they need us, 
when we can fill in a gap that the private And, you know, Maxim has 30 employees, and they have worked on projects like the Panama Canal with 30 employees in Milwaukee. Thank you, and I yield back. 